What's up, guys? <clears throat> Top of the day to you. So, if y'all have been around watching for a while, especially recently, you know, I've been on a little bit of a medical kick. Um, that's going to continue, not going to wane, because I think it's important. That said, you know, I have been harping, as some folks have said it, uh, recently about having first aid kits nice big thorough first aid kits because it's been my opinion and that of many others smarter than me that you're gonna need the contents of this probably far more often than you're gonna need your tourniquet and pressure bandage and chest seals to reiterate and to be a broken record because some people will require you being a broken record. <clears throat> you need tourniquet, pressure bandage, chest seals, etc. You need those. You need to have them. You need to have them in your gear. You need to have them in kits. Um, you need to have them around. But the thing that I keep harping about is everybody wants to talk about those. Everybody wants to talk about getting that latest, you know, uh, trauma kit, bleeder kit. And like, if anybody even mentions a first aid kit, they gloss over it as just like a secondary, oh, well, you know, throw you a couple of Band-Aids in a pouch and, you know, go with it. No, you're going to need those far more, I'm telling you. Whether it's a grid up, grid down, end of the world zombie apocalypse, everyday life situation, you're going to need general purpose first aid items far more often than you're going to need the traumatic stuff. Now, when you need the traumatic stuff, you need it. But you're going to need the other stuff more often. Why do I say all this? Because I'm going to give you two points here. Number one is a point of, I can tell you this from first-hand experience, because I've had to delve into mine multiple times for multiple reasons over the years. And I just had to delve into mine again this past week. Why? Well, that comes to the second point of what I want to talk about and show in this video. I had to break into my first aid kit, and this is actually the one that I keep in my big ruck because it was closest at hand, literally a couple of steps away from the time of the incident I'm about to tell you about. And I broke in and grabbed this. Now, what is this? Well, this is a pack of Super Skin Band Aids, okay, from my medic covered these and the other contents before. If you guys remember, I'll go back and watch that video, or videos, because I can't remember which one. <clears throat> I told you that I had to figure out a way to try some of this stuff to see how it worked, especially these Super Skin Band-Aids, because they really intrigued me, especially for long-term grid down use, right? Grid up, you can make just about any Band-Aid work. Even if it doesn't stick where the flip and you have to change that every couple of hours, eh, you can you can deal with it. It's annoying and it's a hassle, but you can deal with it. But if you're in a true grid down situation, think of like a get home situation or a bug out situation, just being hypothetical, right? Where you need to be able to put a Band-Aid on, you are relying on it to protect the injury that you're covering so that it doesn't get worse and doesn't get infected um, and doesn't hinder your actions or performance, the Band-Aid's got to work. Now, this is going to sound a little overly dramatic, but it does. The Band-Aid's got to work. And by work, it's got to accomplish all those things. It's got to stay on you without irritating your skin. It's got to protect the wound, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. 
Well, I had said I had to figure out how I was going to try these out to see if they actually worked as advertised. Well, I didn't really go on about it because I figured that with my luck, at some point, I would be in need of trying one of them out. True to fashion, I did. Now, I'm going to spare you the graphic pictures, but I will give you the graphic details, because it's important. Uh, earlier this past week, I got up to let the um, furry piranha yard torpedo out, because there was some form of long-tailed um, Chicom infiltrator somewhere in the back of the property that needed to be uh, dealt with that was trying to breach the wire and she needed to get after it. So I got up and let her out and in the process of letting her out somehow or another one of my toes found the sharpest double 90 degreed bottom corner a big heavy door in the process of finding said corner of said door it proceeded to split the end of my toe all the way through the nail back up to the cuticle and all the way through to meat and, and just it, it, it was lovely and there was blood there was lots of blood. Um, I briefly began speaking in tongues or Swahili. I'm not sure which. It was one of the two. Um, I saw Jesus. He is real. We had a conversation. Well, I say we had a conversation. It was really me pointing at my toe and him going, seriously, how? That was kind of the extent of that. Um, so, I managed to grab things I had closest at hand and get the bleeding to stop, which took a little while, because if you know anything about fingers and toes, they're very vascular, kind of like your face. You bleed a lot with a little cut. Something like that, where it split all the way up through the nail and the meat and everything else, and that it bleeds a lot. Finally got all that stopped. And the way it was, was going to be really, really hard to bandage on the end of a toe through the nail. Especially bandage it and get it to stay. Where am I going with this? Well, I'm giving you a long, drawn-out version, but because it's my channel, I can draw it out as long as I want to. Once I get everything stopped, squared away, and I stop seeing double, got breathing rate back down to a more manageable normal level and was no longer uttering weird strange words broke into this and thought oh you know that's a place where I really need a bandage to stick that's a moving part as much as it freaking hurt to move and still does for the record and it's getting rubbed on and moved on and everything else this is going to be a good test to see just how well a band-aid or bandage actually sticks. Fortunately, they had a couple in here that were big enough to cover what I needed it to cover. And I put one on and wrapped it around and squished her down. And sure enough, it stuck and stuck great. Long story short, I'm going to tell you these super skin band-aids, as someone who has used a lot of band-aids over the years. I'm just saying, I have used a lot of band-aids over the years. It's a thing. I grew up outdoors. I grew up doing things. When you're outdoors doing things, you bleed. It's life, right? Been through lots of band-aids. These are straight up legit. That band-aid stayed and I actually more so than what I should have, but I knew what I was doing. I actually left it on for a couple of days without changing it. 
Now, I knew and know how to monitor for infection and all that kind of stuff. I was taking measures for that. But I wanted to see how well it would do in staying on with me taking a shower multiple times, working, moving around, um, putting socks and shoes on and off, that sort of thing. The bandage never gave me a bit of issue. It did not come loose. It did not come off in the water. It did not get wet and hold water because it's not cloth. Um, it protected the wound. It never bled through. Um, when I did go to take it off, it did not irritate the skin at all. It came, it was still really, I mean, it was on there. I had to pull it off, but it wasn't uncomfortable coming off. And I could tell it could have easily stayed on there for, for much longer. So my point with doing that was to see if, if I had to put one on and wasn't in a position to change it very often and I needed it to go a couple of days, would it do it? Yes, it absolutely would do it. Now, yes, you want to try to change bandages on cuts and stuff fairly regularly so you can keep applying antibiotic, whatever, to prevent infection. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you what I did. But these will do it if you have to put one on and leave it for a while due to whatever circumstance and can't change it out. So, my Medic Super Skin Band-Aids, maybe there's other similar products on the market. I don't know. I haven't looked. Probably not going to look. I like these. You can buy them in convenient little packages. They're not expensive. I will be stocking up on these like packs and packs and putting them everywhere. These are straight up legit band-aids. I know they've got them in multiple different sizes. I like this pack right here. Excuse me. I think this is the Super Skin Bleed Module, if I remember correctly. And it comes with three different size bandages in it. Some regular ones, some medium size ones, and then like some uh, knuckle and fingertip bandages. I like that variety. So, yeah, more of these in my future. I'm going to put a specific link directly to these in the description box. If you guys are interested, check them out. Um, so, yeah, I found a way to try out the band-aids for you, which unfortunately when I mentioned that in the previous video I kind of have a feeling at some point it was going to happen so it wasn't intentionally trying to do it, but there you go. Keep your medical kit stocked up guys. First aid kits, gauze, band-aids, antibiotic, all those kind of things. You're going to need them. You're going to need them in everyday life. You're especially going to need them in really really bad catastrophic times and medical stuff is something whether it's a band-aid or a tourniquet or anything in between when you need it to work you need it to work because make no mistake getting an infection from a minor wound that a band-aid could help prevent will kill you just as dead as bleeding out because you didn't have a tourniquet. Either one can end in the exact same results. One's just a lot faster and one's a lot slower and more painful. So, stock up guys. Medical gear. Don't leave home without it. And of course, goes without saying, but I have to repeat it for the people in the back that are a little slow. Get trained. Go get training. Go find a local, whether it's your local community college, Red Cross, or any of the myriad of great instructors that are out there, get first aid training. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a basic first aid class all the way up to a uh, ALS type class, um, whatever. The more medical training you can get, the better. There is nothing too basic and not no level of too much that you can know and learn when it comes to the first aid stuff. Learn it. Stay safe, guys. Take care. I'll see you later.